Yeah, yeah of course, yeah. Okay. So, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nahmadu wa salli ala Rasul Kareem. Praise be to Almighty God and uh, peace and blessings be upon His Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, we got um, Brother Eric, I believe. Yep. Yes, who is a Christian. And today we are going to have a conversation about Christianity. Um, is there any particular topic that you would like to touch upon? Well, anything if you'd like to actually yeah. task me with, then I'll be willing to answer. Okay, let's talk, let's talk about the love that the Christians preach. Yes, when they say that Jesus is all about love and God wants to love everyone. That's the reason he gave his only begotten son and sacrificed himself. So love and um, crucifixion, incarnation, sort of uh, atonement of sin, that sort of thing, you know, because ultimately we all seek salvation, isn't it? That's very, very true. Yeah. I mean, granted, being, a, being of Christian nature, Yeah. since actually reading the gospel within the Bible, a lot of things that have actually come out, uh, because I was a lost man for 26 years, Right. and actually learning about the Lord Jesus and what he did for us, because he died for our sins. Right. He died for our sins. He sacrificed himself as testament to who mankind is. And as a person who is a reasonably new Christian, I mean, I was only baptized four days ago. Seriously? Wow. <laughs> yes, only four days ago. Okay. So 28 years later. Right. Did you, did what does that mean, just for our viewers? Because many people don't understand what baptism involves or what is the meaning of it. If you could perhaps just give us a summary as to what it means to you. Well, baptism to me is the devotion to God, as it right. were, as a devotion to the Lord Jesus, because... So you, feel, you, you are like committed now? I, I am, yes. Okay. I surrendered my life to Him. Right. And this is why a lot of, in fact, all of my life has changed since that period. Right. After witnessing deaths of my family in person, it kind of made me appreciate life a lot more. And that kind of actually opened my heart to the fact of, oh, where have they gone? Where have they gone? Are they, are they departed forever? Or have they gone somewhere else? Right. And it was only after reading the scripture of learning of actually how they all ascend into heaven. Sorry, they... They all ascend into heaven. How do you know that? It's intriguing, it really is. <laughs> it is, really is intriguing. Because the whole, the whole meaning of the day of judgment is that is God is going to judge yes. everyone. Yes, because Isn't it? you stand before him. But when you say they have gone to heaven, it seems to me at least, or, and maybe to many viewers, that you have already made the judgment on, on behalf of God. So shall we leave the judgment to the Almighty? Yes, you do. The yeah. one who judges everyone? Yes, you let him do all the judging. Because yeah, absolutely, remember, yeah. Because we're here, we are here to, it's a big learning curve really. Being, yeah. on, being in this existence, I mean, yes, I do believe as well that we come back if we haven't learned the truth. Or if we haven't opened ourselves Absolutely. up. Yeah. And granted, yes, there are many people who succumb to the ignorance and they don't realise that the Lord is their salvation right. within their lives. Okay. And it's because after you surrender yourself to the Lord Jesus, He takes control of your life. He takes your hand and He walks with you and He shows you what the ins and outs of life can be. Hence why I'm here. So He guides you? He does. He guides me. So when you say He guides you, who is this He? Who is this pronoun you're referring to? The Lord Jesus. The Lord Only Jesus? Jesus? Christ, yes. Only Jesus? What about the God of Jesus? The God of Jesus, the Father of Jesus, right. the Almighty God. Well, he's the God of Jesus as yes, well, he right? Is, yes, he's the Father. He also, he also does... Does he not guide you? What? Does, does the Father not guide you? I guess he does and he doesn't. Mm, what but does that mean? If he does, then I can understand. If he doesn't, I can understand. But when you're going to say both, then you're just negating one from the other. Well, from what it's, I've, it's a contradiction in terms. Well, only from what I've learned yeah. is that the Lord guides me. That's all. Let me ask you this question. When Jesus Christ was on earth during his ministry, whom did he seek guidance from? Whom did he pray to? And whom did he worship? He prays to God. When you say God, you mean the Father? Yes. Okay. Should you not be following in the footsteps of Jesus? Should you not be following the example that Jesus yes. set when he was on earth? Yes. You do believe Jesus is your role model. Yes. He's your teacher. He's the one who guides you. Yes? yes. If the teacher himself is showing you by example that you should worship 
the only true God the Father yes and you should pray to him and you should seek his help in any situation why then do the Christians today seek the help of Jesus when Jesus himself sought the help of God Almighty the Father well again personally I can't answer that okay. but I can only, but, but can I you can, I mean I don't know have you have you given a thought to it I, I can in fact it has come up as a question mark in my mind right. and in my heart as well but what does your heart say that's the important thing I want to know well, because you know we, go, we as Muslims we believe Allah has created us with something called the natural disposition which is called the fitra in Arabic yes so when you do something wrong or when you seek a God other than the Almighty God yes so anything that is not what God expects you your heart will tell you that something is wrong here like the way you said there's a question mark here so for someone who is a rational mind for someone who is a, a person who is looking for truth like you said at the very start I would expect anyone in that position to ask themselves a question that why would Jesus pray to the Father when I am not doing the same thing yet I claim to love and be guided by Jesus how can you be guided when you're going against what Jesus himself set forth as an example to worship and to pray to only the Father as God Almighty okay time to take you, you, you understand my question yeah, yeah? yeah but it's time to take you on a little journey sure go on right when i was born i was born into a very atheist family my okay. mother was demonized demonized yes yeah, she was demonized How, she, what she do you believed, mean like she believed in satan and his angels wow and she was a I, satanist yes i was effectively she was wow. i mean instead of growing up with things like postman pat i was growing up with films like the omen the exorcist things <laughs> like that and it actually fueled hatred within me. Wow. It fueled hatred to the extent that I was against friendship. I was against being open to people. I was also against being open to everybody who actually came and approached me. I was very self-centered and I was very aggressive. I hated everybody. Mm. And that continued for 15 years. And there was one big incident which changed my life forever. My mother, she tried to cut my throat. Oh dear. She tried to kill me because the reason was is because I wasn't I wasn't following her ideals. Sorry, which channel are you, bro? Oh yeah, now I know you. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't recognize you with your mask. Sorry, go on. It's all right. yeah. Because I wasn't following her ideals, so therefore she thought I was worthless. Okay. Then something, but on that day something told me to run. Something told me to run. How old were you, if you don't mind me asking, when you... I was 14. I was 14. Okay. And... It can be quite traumatizing, that kind of experience. It is. Especially if your mom is involved in that. What about your dad? Did he practice my, the same? My father... Well, my mother kicked him out when I was only two months old. Oh, dear. So, okay. really... Um, because you didn't was, have much relation with him? No, with I didn't dad. see them out for 25 years until 2018. Okay. But... And this is where it's all starting to clue together. Because I ran to her parents. Right. Um, which of my grandparents and they brought me up for 11 years but it was only until that stage I didn't even realize what was going on mm. I didn't realize what was going on within myself I didn't know who to believe or who to trust because my world was going up and down up and down on a yeah. constant basis and it was only until the advent of that time when I started witnessing my relatives pass away and die in front of me I mean my grandmother she died right next to me right. and I felt her depart I actually felt the energy go. Then, about a year or so, about, sorry, three years later, my grandfather had a heart attack and mm. I found him dead on the toilet wow. whilst, whilst I slept. And sad, yeah. then eventually, my, I lost my uncle Eric. And of course, then we revert back to my mother because I didn't see her for about 12, 12 years. Oh. Was she still in the same, was she still practicing the same things? Well, really, well, really, she was always, she was always causing anger. She wasn't, you know, she was always blaming everybody else for herself, for her own actions. Okay. And this was something that I'd escaped from, and this was another part of the awakening for me. Okay. And why would you want to live with a Satanist or somebody who believes that, oh, that I call him the dark, because that's what he is? How could, why would you follow something like that? I mean, 
Oh. It's, it's infinitesimal. Yeah. I can understand and where you're coming from. I mean, to be honest, I have never met anyone who had had close encounter with the Satanist since it's your own mom. So just like in a, in a, in a very short summary, tell me what do these Satanists believe in? Like what is, what is their daily practice like? Do they, like the way we pray to God Almighty, do they pray to Satan or something? I don't know how it works. Well, my, well how my mother went about it was, right. she'd always get drunk or she'd get high on illegal substances. Okay. And then she'd absolutely fly off the handle. She would then, I don't know if it was the influences by the drugs and the alcohol, but she always used to do like demonish things. Like she used to take my soft toys and turn their heads around in front of me. She also used to pin them against the wall mm. and like, I don't know, like put pins in them, oh. things like that, as if it was voodooism, as it, as it were. Um, she would also try and preach uh, to me a kind of devilish ritual, saying, oh, he's coming back, Satan will rule your life, you are going to hell. And she, you know, she made me feel this big. Mm. Oh, I can understand, yeah. And so it was was she like in some sort of a group or all this was just by herself? It was purely by her own volition. Oh, okay. Purely by her own So maybe volition. there is obviously some disturbance. I don't know whether it's mentally or whatever it is. There seems to be something not right. Did you not like contact the social services or something? Because in this country, you know, you have that safety net. Yes, but unfortunately that worked against me. Oh, did it? Because my mother, my mother actually isolated me similar to what people had to endure with COVID last year. Mm. I was always on my own, never allowed to go out and speak with friends or relatives. Oh, okay. And I couldn't even put two words together, let alone an entire sentence. Mm. And with my mother's wrath and power over me, she was the one that did the talking to social services right. instead of me. She lied to such an extent mm. that they were actually blaming me for the cause of all of her problems. Okay. That's what she was caught. That's what yeah. she was doing. And eventually, I, I just went on a downhill death spiral. Okay. From the. I understand. I mean, look, there are two things that you mentioned, which kind of wants me to question. So one was the death of your family members. Yes. So that really shook you in a way. And obviously, your background with your mom, that's a different thing. Mm -hmm. So this afterlife, you know, which you, you, you're worried about the afterlife, like where would they go after dying? So this is something that you want to question. Did you question about this and did you find an answer? At the time, at the time, I must admit that I didn't. Right. Because, again, it was only recent times that my mind, is, my mind and heart have actually been opened mm. to, to such a subject. Hence why I'm here, because I'm here to learn. Right. I'm here to learn. Absolutely. Again, yeah. From all sides, whether you can be Islamic, you can be a Buddhist, you can be Hindu, you can be a Christian. I like to learn from all aspects. No, it's good. You, you have an open mind. You're an open-minded person. So it's something that's quite important when it comes to learning new things. Learning, keeping your mind open is quite important because if you're just going to shut yourself and not listen to anyone, then you can easily be indoctrinated by that one single, what do you consider to be the truth, you know? You can do, and then you yeah. can class other religions as being, well, Absolutely, evil. yeah. I mean, I mean, take Islam, for example. What's mm. happened over the last 20 years, it's been blackballed mm. with what's been going on. Everything, every terror, terrorist, terrorist attack, everything like that has all been reverted back to Islam, mm. hasn't it? That's what the media portrayed. Yeah, that's what the media portrays, because it gives your religion a bad name. Absolutely, yeah. Then you've got, but don't forget, you have got Christian attacks as well. You've got Christian rape pillages. You've got yeah. murders. You've got things like that. But people take it as, it as like, oh, fair enough, he did wrong. Mm -hmm. But they absolutely condemn anyone who is Islamic. Yeah. I mean, obviously, look, if the, this is how, unfortunately, the media works. Hey. I'd like to speak to you for a few minutes because I'm in a rush to Yes, of course. No, 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 it doesn't have to be if you want to. Yeah, we're in the middle of a conversation, if I you don't know. mind. Yeah. That's why I was yeah, sure. So what I'm saying is that uh, the media can obviously twist the reality. Yes, and we know that. Obviously, there are 1.9 billion Muslims in the world today. Yes, so you're talking about like every, um, like in in every four people, one person is a Muslim in a way, effectively. I mean, if anyone thinks that all Muslims are somehow related to terrorism, yes, then they are obviously deluded. 
and I think the media has a big role to play because whenever there is some terrorist attack out there, they always highlight the religion of the person if they are Muslim. However, when it's a right-wing Christian who does it, then they, they, they say... They just dismiss it. Exactly. No, they say something like a lone wolf or something like that. But anyway, the people who are woke, they know the reality, they know what's happening. And I think from experience, people know who are the good guys, who are the bad guys. You know, obviously there are, we don't, as a Muslim, I would never say that there are no bad Muslims in, in, in our community. Obviously, every religion or every, even non-religion, even amongst the atheists, amongst the agnostics, amongst the communists, among, amongst all the other ideologies out there, there's always bound to be good and bad people. Yes? And this is true for every faith, every religion. But a terrorist doesn't have a faith. They have an ideology that they want to somehow think or make other people think as well that that is the truth. Yes. So coming back to the discussion we were having, you know, that's uh, the reason I asked you about the afterlife, because like I said, that is something which had a profound effect on you. What do you understand about the afterlife as a Christian? Well, again... Or what have you been told? I don't know, because you said you're fairly new well, well, again, to this I'm faith. Fairly, yeah. I'm fairly new and I'm still mm. learning. Okay. All I know is, once we have departed, once this body has finished its use, yeah. we ascend and we go before God and we get judged. Yeah. And we get shown a complete relapse of our lives to right. see what we have done wrong, what sins we committed, and also if we've done right or what else have we done right. Yeah. And if we have fulfilled his criteria, his Ten Commandments, then we shall ascend into heaven. All right. Okay, that's all I know, so far. Okay, so when you say the Ten Commandments, you know that is the Mosaic Law. That is the Old Old Testament. It is the Old Testament. Yeah, and Jesus, by the way, said he's come here to fulfill the law. So he himself maintained the law. He himself practiced the law. And he told others to do so. However, you know, that is the reason. What, do you know what is the first commandment from those Ten Commandments? Well, again, I just need to read it. I just know the Yes, so the first, the first commandment is to love your Lord with all your heart and your mind. And this is very important. So when he says, love your Lord, yes, we have to ask the question, which Lord is, or which God is this first commandment talking about? And Jesus was asked the same question by a Jewish rabbi who comes to him and asks him what is the most important commandment. And he points to the Shema. You know what is the Shema? The Shema is something that the Jewish people, they testify to and they pronounce during the prayers. Yes, which is basically Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Elahu Elahi Ahad. Okay, now I might not have pronounced it correctly, but what it basically means is that the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Yes, yes. and they are referring to this one unique God Almighty. Yes, which Moses believed in. So if you look at Deuteronomy 6 4, this is exactly what Moses says. And then Jesus repeats this Shema in Mark 12 29 in the New Testament when he was asked this question about the most important commandment. So that's the reason, you know, earlier I asked you, why do you pay so much emphasis on following Jesus rather than following the God of Jesus? Because if I was in your place, I would look at the ultimate authority. And who is the ultimate authority according to Jesus Christ? Lord God himself. God the Father, yes? So would it not be more sensible you know, you're, you're worried about your afterlife. Would it not be more sensible to actually believe and to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ? When in John 17, 3, in the New Testament again, he says, the, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the Father, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So Jesus is saying to believe in the only true God, and he identifies that, to be only the Father, the only true God. He didn't say um, the uh, one of the true God, yes? Like he didn't mention anything about the Trinity. So he, he never said that to believe only in me, Jesus Christ, or to believe in the Holy Spirit. But he says, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the Father, the only true God, and Jesus Christ himself. So obviously, you have to believe in Jesus, but he identifies himself as a Christ, and you have to believe and worship and pray to only the Father because he identifies against Jesus Christ whom you hold to be quite high because the Lord Jesus was the Son of God yeah but we'll come to the Son of God in a minute let's identify who according to Jesus Christ is the only true God yes so this is from the scripture 
It's not the church telling, because the church can preach something against. You know, there are many churches out there. Many churches preach many different things. Even though they all claim to have the same Holy Spirit, they claim, they, they kind of preach different things. And, and again... Yeah. You can you can join us if you want, sister. Yeah, we can. Oriental Orthodox. Yeah. Okay. She means Eastern Eastern Orthodox. So you know, same thing. Semantics. And of course, but I have to. Yeah. But I have to actually thank you, yeah. as being a Muslim, to actually teach me as yeah. well. That's something I thought would never happen. But you know. Every day is a school day. As <laughs> you say, you learn something new every day. Yeah. The thing is, you know, I have been coming to Speaker's Corner for a very long time. I've had many discussions. I, I can understand. I've had many discussions with Christians, with non-Christians. And the main objective of um, our channel, which is Dawa Wise, yes? So please like and subscribe if you guys are getting value from this, inshallah. Um, God willing, that means. So our objective is to basically to learn and to propagate the truth yes so what when we look for evidence in different scriptures like in the bible in the quran yes we look for what the, the scripture says you know because there can be many kind of people like like we talked about different kinds of people in different faiths earlier they can be good and evil you know people can always say many things yeah but ultimately what we in order to judge a religion in order to judge anybody's ideology you you always look at the scriptures see what they say see what they teach yeah so for example i gave you the example of john 7 3 where jesus himself is telling you very explicitly who the only true god is yes so regardless of what the church teaches about the trinity which to be honest is not in the bible yes you'll never find an explicit statement in the bible of anyone saying god is a triune being or god himself is saying that i manifest as three persons Okay, because the church took 400 years, yes, to even begin talking about this, um, 350 years to be specific, yeah, in the, in the Council of Nicaea, Council of uh, Constantinople in the year 381. So this is like 300 years or more after Jesus Christ has left. They're still arguing about whether, Jesus, whether God is um, the Father, Son and Holy Ghost or it's just the Father and the Son or even the Holy Spirit is in there. You know, so many different ecumenical churches. There have been like seven different councils from the year 325 all the way to 787, you know, until the 8th century. And even today, many, you know, like the lady she was saying, to believe in the truth in the Oriental, Eastern Oriental Church, yes? So she is now of a different denomination to you, to your church. And that's the reason I told you that there are many churches teaching many things and they all claim that they have the truth. But you see, like I said, judge a religion based on the scripture. So when an Oriental comes, uh, or when an Eastern Orthodox comes, or when a Catholic comes, or a Protestant, I would ask them, show me in the Bible, where anyone says to worship a triune being. Would this also account for the confusion about religion these days? Absolutely. That's the reason you had so many different councils, so many different church. And if you look at the history of Christianity, there's always been conflict within the churches as to which church is right, yes? Who are the heretics? Who are the ones who have been excommunicated from the church? There's always been tension in, with regards to the belief in God, but they never go and point them back to the Bible. Yes, which is what they should have been doing. But even the Bible itself had its own, has its, has its own history. Like if I ask the Christians, show me anything from the first century, from the time of Jesus Christ, or even from the first hundred years, yes? Where did anyone have anything to do with the New Testament? There's not a single manuscript out there to no, show us this. No, yeah. So how would you base your claims based even on the Bible? Yes? You see what I mean? These are the kind of questions that should be popping up in your head as someone who is, who's, uh, who's open-minded and looks and seeks the truth. Because we pray to Almighty to give you Hidayah, to give everyone Hidayah, including myself. Hidayah means to see, we seek guidance to, for God Almighty to show us the truth. Yes, and we leave it to the Almighty. So you see, if, if I was in your place, I would definitely be worshipping the God of Jesus, not Jesus. Are you with me? I'm with you. Yes. Yeah? So this is, this is, like I said, this is the Islamic understanding of God Almighty that He doesn't change. 
He doesn't become from Almighty to a man and then die by his own creation. This is something I myself personally and many Muslims would consider to be blasphemous. Because how can God Almighty come down, be tortured, yes, and then put to death by the very people that he created? Yes? This is an eyebrow, doesn't it? It does indeed. So these are the kind of questions that you should be seeking. Like I said, if you're seeking the truth, then you should be open-minded and you should be looking at the truth in different places. So have you ever read the Quran or had, have you had a, I don't know, a discussion with a Muslim before? Well, I've got to say, you're the first one I've actually spoken to properly. Yeah. And I, and I have to say... Whereabouts are you from, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, from South East England. Okay. Yes. South East England. Okay. I'm sure there's, there's Muslims everywhere. It doesn't matter where you go. But, but, but again, I must admit, I yeah. mean, I have spoken to a few of you, a few of the Islamic community right. whilst I've been doing outreach. And I have to say, you guys are very open. You're very honest. Yeah. And yes. You know. Yeah. I mean, look, like I said before, you know, our objective is to seek the truth and to propagate the truth. And by the way, these videos, they go on YouTube. So if we were lying or if we, if we were being dishonest, yes, people will know this, you know, they can fact check things nowadays in the age of information. Yes, it's something that is quite easy. And in the age of information, ignorance is something that shouldn't be allowed. Yes. <laughs> it shouldn't I mean, be allowed. I mean, ignorance yeah. and hypocrisy are two of the main things yeah. that are going on in this world. Absolutely. And, but it's great to actually speak to a Muslim in terms of how open they are, as well as what logic they've got in their head. Yeah, absolutely. And, and really, it's an absolute yeah. pleasure to talk to you. No, likewise, it, it's a pleasure. You're, you're an open minded person, a friendly person, and we always like to talk and discuss about our faiths, but in a friendly way. So we we benefit each other you know what I mean yeah. with the information yes and uh, like I said I mean in the age of information ignorance is a choice so we have we don't have any excuse today we can just go on the internet look for things but then that can not always be foolproof you know because you find lots of uh, misinformation as well just like the media wants to spread misinformation there's a lot of misinformation about Islam and obviously about Christianity as well on the internet so we go back to the source what is the source of Christianity the Bible what is the source of the uh, for Islam, the Quran and the Hadith. So we go back to the source and then we look at it and then we see, uh, we, we try to research, we try to study and we find out a great deal from that. So what I'm saying is that, look, salvation like you spoke at the very beginning is something should be paramount for us in terms of our priorities. Yes, because we know that one day we all are going to die. Oh yes, I mean, as the saying goes, as soon yeah. as you're born, you know you're yeah. going to die. Yeah, regardless of your belief or disbelief, you're going to die. I don't think even the atheists would actually disagree with that. Absolutely not. Yes, so no one can disagree with this one fundamental truth which everyone believes in that death is imminent for the mortal, all mortal. Who is the only one who is immortal? God. God Almighty. Did Jesus die according to you? There you go. So even Jesus is not someone who is immortal, he also is subject to death. I would rather believe and worship someone who doesn't die. And that is the God of Jesus. What about, what about the Lord Jesus' resurrection? Yeah, so resurrection, you know, like I said, that also proves that he was mortal. Because who needs resurrection? It's the one who dies, right? Yeah, yeah. You see what I, I mean? To hear from you, yes. Yeah. So both crucifixion and resurrection point to the fact that Jesus is mortal. That means he's someone who is subject to death. Yes? By the way, I don't know if you know much about what the Muslims believe about Jesus. I'm afraid not, sorry. Okay, so Jesus Christ, according to the Muslims, according to the Quran, is one of the mightiest messengers of God. He's a prophet of God. He is the Messiah. So unlike the Jews, we Muslims accept him to be the Messiah, like the Christians do. Yes? However, where we differ is the fact that the Christians raise him to be co-equal with God. We do not do that. We keep him to be someone who is in his rightful place, which is the Messiah and the messenger and the prophet of God. So we, we wouldn't be Muslim, by the way. I don't know if you know this, a Muslim who rejects Jesus Christ is not a Muslim. He's outside the fall of Islam. If he rejects Jesus Christ as being the Messiah and as being um, uh, a messenger and a prophet of God. So this is something which is fundamental for a Muslim to believe in. I had no idea that the Lord Jesus actually had a huge influence huge. on Islam. Huge. And we do believe that he was born of the Virgin Mary. Yes, we do. We do actually believe that he 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 was the one who had many miracles. Yes, raising the dead back to life. 
Yes, he used to cure the blind, the lepers. All this thing is in the Quran, actually, and in the, in our belief, in our in the Hadith as well. You see? Yes. So there's a lot of commonality. You know, we Muslims believe in all the prophets. We don't reject any true prophet. So we accept Jesus Christ. We accept Moses. We accept. Um, um, Abraham, Abraham, Jacob, Isaac, David, Jacob, Isaac, Jacob. all of them, yes, all of them. And we accept also Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu as the last and the final messenger who brought the final message, the Quran, to us. And you know, we, con we consider the Quran to be something which is um, the Muhammad or something that, uh, that differentiates the falsehood from the truth. Yeah, so we, we accept that there are previous messengers and prophets like the ones I just mentioned and we also believe that these prophets uh, sorry these messengers were given books sacred books like the Injil which is which uh, has become kind of like uh, what the Christians believe in today yes so the Injil was something that was given to Jesus Christ whom we call Isa in Arabic in the Quran is mentioned as Isa salam, or Isa ibn Maryam Isa the son of Mary so we don't say son of God, we say son of Mary. And that is the other difference you mentioned earlier about the son of God. We do not believe him to be son of God. You see, in Christianity also, if you look in the Bible, there are many sons of God. For example, Adam is called the son of God, the definite article. Yes, David is called the son of God. Abraham is called the son of God. Yes, Israel, uh, or as he is known as uh, uh, Jacob. You know Jacob? Yeah. So there are many sons of God in the Bible. What does that mean? Because this is a phrase that was used by the Hebrew people. The Jewish people use this phrase, son of God, for those people who were righteous. So those people who were God-fearing, you know, those people who, like, like the way you committed your life to Jesus Christ, they committed their life to Almighty God. Yes? So they were called sons of God. Yes? Like it says also in the Bible, you must have heard this, um, it says, um, the peacekeepers are the children of God. Yes? And then uh, many places it says, be like a child, because they belong to the kingdom of God. Yes? Why is that? Because the children are sin free. Yes? They're without sin. And Jesus even says to be like children. That means be without sin. Try not to sin, because the children don't. So be like them. And that is what we also believe as Muslims, is that when you are born, you're born without any sin. You're born free of sins. Oh, whereas, whereas on the Christian side, yeah. we are born in sin. We are born through sin. Yeah. So therefore, in your case, you're born without sin. Whereas in our cases, we are. Yeah. So what do you make of that? Have you, I don't know if you have actually thought about that. Because to me, anyone who's born with a negative account, yes? Well, again, it's no fault of his or hers, is it? No, but it was actually frightening at first to actually hear it. Mm. But, you know, what went through your mind? Just... I don't know. Well, well, Take me through well, let me see. through well, that journey of yours. Well, let me see. Well, the first time I was actually doing um, an, out an outreach, yeah. and um, there was this little chap called Mark. I mean, he's a devotee of the Bible. I mean, he could literally read you whole scriptures. Sorry, who's that? The, the chap on the. Yeah, that's um, yeah, that's David down there. But there's a name, David. Yeah. Oh yeah, little, yeah, David. I've spoken to him a few times. There's a little chap who comes with us. He's in his uh, he's in his eighties now. His name's Mark. Okay. And um, he was the one that was taught. Well, he was the one that actually taught me that we were born through sin. I was like, how do you work that out? Yeah. And I think to myself, okay, so <laughs> I got the first impression was, we're born through sin. So in my mind, I thought, oh, we're going to hell. <laughs> that's, that's actually quite logical, if you ask me. Because obviously, if you're born through sin, and you're a sinner since you're born, yeah. then automatically, if you're a sinner, you go to hell, isn't it? So how did you, I don't know, how did you overcome that illogical stance? It was, again, it was a bit of a journey. Because yeah. Again, talking to my group here, Dave, um, he taught me that if you actually apologize or just repent your sins, as it were, then, you, then the Lord will forgive you. God yeah. will forgive you. That's actually a good answer. You know, as Muslims, we believe that. But we do not believe a child from day one is born, born with a sin. Yeah. We believe they are born free of sin. They are born pure. It is their parents and their communities who then uh, take them through that, uh, I don't know, whatever sins they commit, or even their own self actually. 
So you're ultimately responsible for your sins, but you have to obviously come to an age where you understand what is good and uh, uh, what is good and evil. You see what I mean? And, and in the last 14 years, I have. Mm. I mean, I've realised what not to do, but also what to follow. Yeah. And that's why I'm still learning. Absolutely. Yeah. So you see, for me, someone who is born with a sin from day one, I think that thought itself is unjust. I mean, the baby doesn't understand what is right and wrong. So if you, t if you, if you shine a lighter in front of the, the child, the child will try to hold it. They don't even know what is danger or what is right and what is wrong. How will they understand about sin? How will they understand about what is righteous? They want. And that is the reason in Islam we believe that until you age, sorry, until you reach the age of understanding, yes, which, which generally is the age of puberty, yes, only then you become accountable for your actions. And this is true in the case of the courts as well. So if you go to the court, you know, they have juvenile courts for a reason. So the children are treated even though if they, they might have committed crimes and atrocities, they are treated in a different way uh, than to the adults. Because obviously they do understand that a child is not the same as an adult. Yes? No. Now the term child is obviously subjective against, because in some countries you might have a different yes. age. <laughs> yes, and again, yeah. um, saying that we are born through sin, but it's the parents that actually commit sin, that's why, and that's how why we are born through that sin. Yeah. And again, like you say, in Islam, you're born through purity. Yeah. We not. We believe, we believe that if your parents have committed a sin, then that shouldn't be visited upon you. Because why would you be responsible for the sins of your parents? Same thing, why would they be responsible for the sins of their parents or your grandparents? See what I mean? Every individual is responsible for their own or accountable for their own sins. Just like when you go to the court yes if you're the one committed the crime you're the one who has to do the time yeah no one will say that you're guilty before even you step into the court or before you have even committed any crime you see what I mean they always yeah similarly we believe that God is just he's not unjust so if anyone advocates or teaches you that you are a sinner since you were a baby then there's something fundamentally wrong with that particular teaching and alhamdulillah you see praise be to god we don't believe that god is unjust we believe that he has he is the one who is the most just and there's no one who is going to say or claim that he's unjust by making such statements that god created you because if you read the old testament you know what it says in in ezekiel in ezekiel 18 20 it says exactly what i just mentioned that the father is not accountable for the sins of the son and the son is not accountable for the sins of the father and then it goes on to say that if someone who repents even they be the wickedest of the wicked god can forgive the sins god has the ability to forgive the sin without any repentance sorry without any shedding of blood but there has to be repentance that means you should act you should uh, proactively take the step to seek repentance and forgiveness from God Almighty. And that's the reason I'm saying that God is able to forgive. However, he is not going to demand any animal's blood or any human blood. No. Yes? And that is the other, I think, doctrine which you probably have come across. Yes. Yeah. What do you make of that? Well, personally, personally I think it's a little bit absurd. Right? <laughs> that's fine. Sorry, carry on. So we talk about the doctrine of the, the, the indoctrination as yeah. well as as well as how warped again through propaganda media has mm. become in terms of all religions. I mean, yours is blacklisted, mine is blacklisted, Catholicism yeah. has blacklisted, and we can't win. Yeah, but don't you know what I say is let's not worry about what people say about our faith. Let's look at the source which we say is the one where we take our religion from or were faithful. So like I said, go back to the scriptures, go back to the sacred books, the ones that we claim to be from God. You see what I mean? So regardless of what the world says, you know, during the time of Jesus Christ, during the time of in fact, most of the prophets, they all had to face this oppression from their people because change didn't come easily. Yes. So when the Prophet Sallallahu yes, before he claimed that he was the prophet of God, yes, the people 
in his community used to say that you are the trustworthy one. You are Al-Amin, yes, the one who is trustworthy. And they used to entrust uh, their belongings to him. Like, you, okay, this is something valuable I have, take care of it while I go on travel or something. So they used to trust him so much. And he used to have this, uh, what he said, this title called Al-Amin, the one who is trustworthy. As soon as he says, when he got the revelation from God Almighty, and he says to them, the Quraysh, his own people, that God is only one, yes? And every other God, yes, or alleged God is false. As soon as he made that statement, because in his time, the, the Arabs, they were the pagans. They used to worship many gods, yes? Yeah. <laughs> Sunny props. Yeah, that's fine. Jazakallah khair. Thank you, brother. Anyway, mate, just to conclude, because I do have to get my talk. Yeah, yeah, sure. But, again, absolute pleasure talking to you. Yeah, and thank you. Learning, again, the ins and outs of what Islam is like, but also how, how your religion incorporates Christianity kind of into it. Yeah. Not just Christianity, even Judaism. So, you know, the Judaism, they believe in the same, believe in the same prophets. We believe in the same prophets as well. Like, all the way from Adam to the... Obviously, they don't believe in Jesus Christ as a Messiah. No. They reject him. They do not believe in Prophet Muhammad. They reject him as well. And that's the reason I say the Christians are closer to us than the Jews. Even though there are many, many of the things are in Sharia are similar to that of the Jewish faith. But in terms of the prophets, the Christians are closer to us because they accept Jesus Christ as a Messiah. Yeah. 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 Because I have the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah. But, but like I said, Jesus Christ had the Father. So anyway, go and do some research, Eric. I know you might have been told or informed by certain Christians about a certain narrow path but like, like a person with an open mind like yourself try to explore even from your own faith even from your own Bible try to research it okay because if you're just going to be fed um, everything in terms and not do our own research then we can be duped into something which is not right because yes. I want you ultimately to be saved on the day of judgment to stand in front of God and say God with all my heart and with all my ability with my mind I tried to do research yes and I came to the conclusion that this is the truth then you can then say to God Almighty on that day that yes I've done this but if you're just going to listen to only one religion like Christianity instead of using your own sources yes instead of using your own mind and your abilities to do research with an open mind like for example I would suggest you go and research about Islam would you like to have the Quran if I gave you one? No, it's fine. No, no problem. But, but, still, but maybe you know, when you're ready. Maybe so. Yes. But I really appreciate talking to you. You've been a gentleman. Uh, and uh, it was indeed an interesting discussion. It, it was interesting and interesting here. Yeah. Thank you. So thanks a lot. Appreciate your help. Yeah. Okay. God bless you. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.